Hey, I'm a Big Four audit manager and when I first started out as an auditor, honestly what really surprised me was just how much we actually use Microsoft Excel. So whether we're using it on our side to perhaps document our testing and do calculations. On the other hand then, there's also the client. So management will often perform their workings and share these from Microsoft Excel. It really does just help to be proficient in Excel as a finance professional and especially in audit. I'm specifically mentioning audit here because that is my current role and more information can be found here. But this also does actually apply to other roles as well. So previously I was a business analyst at IBM and we also use Excel quite a bit actually. So if you are new to a grad scheme and you think that you might be using Excel, I think this video is a great place to start. It will just really help you stand out as a new joiner. So hopefully this video has something for everyone or perhaps boost your confidence if you are already then an Excel whiz. So by no means at all am I saying I'm a professional. I'm definitely not. Just to add, I will kind of be assuming that you do have a basic understanding of Excel already so you know how to filter and sort data using equal sum freezing panes just those kinds of things so i will be skipping over those in this video So the first thing I'll start off with is those classic pivot tables. So I first came across this at IBM. So pivot tables are honestly just so, so useful. So they're especially useful, for example, you know, if you've got maybe just loads of rows of data, literally like thousands of rows of data, lots of different columns. So for example, you might have a lot of different transactions that have been posted throughout the year. What a pivot table then actually allows you to do is to extract the exact data that you do want. So for example, literally within you know a few seconds, if you put that pivot table together, you'll be able to quickly find out, for example, how much has been posted to a certain code. So I'll put a link to a basic tutorial as well in the description below. But then here are some key tips that I'll definitely make with pivot tables and I have had to learn the hard way with these. Firstly, just make sure there are no blank fields or columns when you're making the pivot table. So next actually if your data does change it doesn't automatically update the pivot table you do need to click the refresh button yourself I would also just really recommend playing around with pivot tables it will just help you get so much quicker so something I've also found is when you're dragging and dropping certain fields into the little pivot sections value is sometimes automatically set to count so for example instead of telling you the total value it's telling you the amount of values that have been input so to correct this all you need to do is simply click on the drop down option where it says count of and select the value field settings and then press sum and press OK. It's also really difficult to sort data when it's in that pivot table. So sometimes as well, it does just help to, you know, copy and paste it and then just play around with it after. And then finally, it's worth remembering that there is just always a grand total at the bottom and it also does give you the total of any blanks as well. And number two, we have the lookup. So I just love the lookups. I think they're so, so useful. I first came across them, you know, in my GCSE IT exams. Why a VLOOKUP is so good is because it allows you to match data from different sources. So you'll need one unique field that is in both and then you can just match it up. This might not really be making any sense to you at the moment. So basically you might have, say, a list of customer data. One list might say how much revenue you've got from the customer, but another list might actually say their addresses and the orders are just really muddled up and you can't just easily put them together. What a VLOOKUP would do is to allow you to actually merge these together so you can have the customer by their revenue and also their address all put together. So the unique field here would of course be say the customer name or the customer number. Again, in the description below, there's a tutorial for VLOOKUPs. So I've definitely learned the hard way with these VLOOKUPs. And the first thing that I just hate getting with a VLOOKUP is the hashtag NA. So it's just the worst thing that comes up and you just really rack your brains up. Why has this come up? What have I done wrong? So I've actually found that it's typically one of three things. First is just the most obvious that there's, you know, an error in your formula. The next is actually valid where it should be NA because there isn't any data that matches it. If you actually did a control F and tried to find it yourself, if it did actually come back with no results and you know that your VLOOKUP is actually potentially working. Then the third reason could actually be that the actual response that you should be picking up is hashtag NA, which I highly doubt. So a common reason I've actually found for the VLOOKUP not working is there might be a hidden space. So that could be before or after the lookup value. Another common reason that I found actually is that your data might be stored as say text instead of a number. 
and that could also have an impact. And then another common tip is if you are going to use the Excel feature where you can just drag it all down and copy across the formula into other cells as well, then make sure you are using the dollar sign so that just keeps the table that you're initially looking up in your VLOOKUP to be the exact same table rather than that also dragging down as well. What actually happens then is just then the data at the top just might not be getting matched. So now let's talk about data formatting because a lot of the time you will just get sent data or have data that's just quite messy and hard to work with. For example, and quick ways to kind of tidy this up. So firstly, you could remove duplicates. And for all of these, I will just put links in the description below so you can, you know, kind of check them out in your own time. But yeah, you can delete the blank rolls. What you can also actually do is turn your text into columns. So if you had, say, the day, the month and the year all in one column and you wanted to split it out into day, month, year, you can use text to columns and it will split it then into those three columns and it's actually quite useful then. There may actually also be Excel add-ins which are quite useful. So we have an analytics toolbar and there's an import wizard that you can use. I can't lie, this one's quite complicated. I just didn't really know how to use I kind of guess when I'm using it to be honest, but I feel like I'm over time getting better, but that is actually a good one if you do have access. Number four then is a quick access toolbar. So this is just a really handy feature. I think they also have it on Word and PowerPoint and whatever else, but it's literally just quite self-explanatory because it is a quick access toolbar. So you'll be able to quickly just have these buttons already preset at the top of your Excel. So you can always just find them and click them if they're common ones you use. But I find, for example, a good one's Format Painter. I'm using that quite a lot, or even just the filter button. It's just, you know, just save that bit of time, which always helps. So yeah, link in the description below for more details on how to do that. Next, we'll move on to the absolute function. So if you don't know what absolute is, it's essentially where you've got, say, positive and negative numbers and you want to turn them all into positive numbers. So you might be thinking if you've got negative numbers, you can just times it all by minus one, but it is actually just quite quick if you do equals abs and then, you know, just put the cell in and you can just drag it down, it's quite quick. If you've got a lot of data and you might have numbers that net off within the data and you want to see which ones those are, firstly, turn them into all absolute functions figures and then just remove any duplicates but if you really want to be sure and what I usually always do if I'm going to do this is I will do the absolute function and then I'll just sort the data from say largest to smallest and then you'll be able to see in the row next to it which ones actually are the positives and negatives and it will just sort it out so it's all together. So this next bit, I'm literally just going to drop you all these useful functions. I did just come across this picture and I thought it's quite handy, so feel free to take a screenshot. So this next one's just really quick, really simple, but it's just adjusting the width or the height of rows and columns. So this might be a quite obvious one, but I still just want to say it anyway. So people might think that you have to do it one by one to adjust, but actually you can highlight several together or even the whole workbook. And then once you slide it, it should apply to all columns or, you know, all rows. And if you actually double click on one, it will make it that exact length that it needs to be for that column. And then it also could apply to others. But eight for my useful tips is drop down lists. So I use them sometimes, not always, but I think it's just a useful one to know. If you just want your data to be provided in certain ways and you want to keep the errors to a minimum because you know people might just put put in all sorts and you just want, you know, yes or no, then a drop down list is what you need for sure. All you need to do is select data validation from the data tab and then create the list through cell references. So I've made it sound quite simple, but if you do need a little tutorial, that's also in the description below. I've noticed I keep saying, oh, another useful tip, another useful tip. Like this one is also useful. I think they all are. But this one in particular is good if you need to just fix some really slow Excel files. Hopefully you don't need to do this that often, but it might actually be due to a lot of formulas and things just constantly updating in the background. And then what this causes is just it takes so long to load. It's so frustrating. So again, a link is in the description below and it will explain it further. Now, pretty much my last tip, again, is like a big dump, but it is just those Excel shortcuts. So you know what I found? Some people literally are just like only using their keyboard. They're just like clicking, moving tab to tab, but it's quite mad. I I'm really just not that advanced yet. To be honest, I don't think I'll ever be that advanced, but I do like, you know, my control C, control V, my copy and paste, and just like little kind of simple ones. 
But here on screen, I'll just put the long list. And again, it's something to screenshot if you do want to come back to this. But a really, really good one that I found, especially for audit, is control plus open square bracket. So it's actually in that table and it's called precedence, but I really just didn't know what that meant. Why it's just so useful is especially if you're in a really formula driven workbook, so in an Excel sheet, you can actually click on the cell and if it's got a formula in, so it's like equals this cell times by 10 and you wanna get straight to that cell, if you press equals and then the plus the square brackets, it'll just take you there so quickly. Another useful one is control shift and then add. And then that can just add you rows and columns, but you do just need to kind of highlight it first and then press that shortcut. This next shortcut as well, I think it's just brilliant because, right, so I'll give you an example. So I had someone from the client team and they were showing me their workbook and they were just scrolling down for ages to just to get to the bottom. And I was like, oh, you know, you can just literally press control and the down arrow and it just takes you straight down to the bottom like that. It's so quick. If you do have the blank data within that, in that row, it will take you to the blank and then you have to go again and whatever, but you get the drift. It does just take you down quickly. Same applies for, you know, the different arrows. If you want to go left, right, up, whatever, it's just very quick. And if you use as well, control shift and the arrows, it'll highlight it all as well. And then I also mentioned how people, you know, the whizzes, they're just using their keyboard to just flick between tabs that is literally just alt tab but i just i don't know i just haven't mastered that i've never really tried but it definitely will just make you look like a proper excel genius so if you want to take that with you to your next job you'll probably impress a few people if you've watched this far then i'll give you another beautiful tip which i just follow all the time and it's just if there's anything you're unsure how to do, just literally Google it. I do it all the time and it helps so much. So thank you so much for watching. If you did find this video helpful, then do give me a like. Any questions, any comments, drop them in the box below. I'd be happy to address those. And as always, I'll be back with more videos every single week. So make sure to subscribe and hopefully you'll see me again soon. Thanks. <laughs>